Item number SCP-2470 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures To facilitate containment, Area 141 has been established at the site of discovery. Due to the extremely hazardous nature of SCP-2470, as well as the potential threat from pro-apocalyptic religious mystical movements and sects, on-site personnel are responsible for both containing the object and protecting Area 141 from any and all outside threats. Containment Zone Structure The central containment volume of Area 141 headquarters is a hyperboloid-shaped room with a lower base diameter of 55 meters, upper base diameter of 42 meters, and 36 meters in height. Walls and floor structures are doubled. The outer walls, no less than 4.5 meters thick, are made of high-density pre-stressed concrete. The inner ones, 1.5 meters thick, are made of special adamant brand high alloy steel, produced by Plant 45. The containment volume is fitted with two sets of service entrance airlocks with Class 6 explosion resistant blast doors and an additional emergency quick hardening compound sealing system. In the center of the containment volume, there are two concentric achisohedron shaped shells installed, the diameters of their circumferences being 8 and 12 meters respectively. The shells are supported by a two-spool suspension system and are additionally surrounded by a Faraday cage made of superconducting cable with cells no larger than 5 cm across. High vacuum inside the shells and the containment volume is maintained by two main and six backup heavy-duty turbomolecular pumps. The space between the inner and outer walls of the containment volume acts as four vacuum space and is pumped by four main and four reserve rotary vane pumps which are capable of operating in an accelerated mode for no less than one hour. Pumps are to be checked for serviceability on a weekly basis. Preventative replacements and scheduled maintenance is to be conducted every two months. Area 141's electric power supply consists of no less than two independent external sources and two main and reserve standalone power systems with at least a 100% margin of capacity each. The central shells are identical in structure, except for respective dimensions, and both are constructed of 20 triangular titanium plates 1.5 cm thick, mounted on a steel skeleton and adjusted to minimize gap size along matching edges. One of the plates of each shell is to be mounted on a guide rail serving as an access port, which can only be opened from the outside. The frames in question are to be connected to a stabilized voltage supply maintaining a potential difference of 120 volts across the structure. The inner surfaces of the shells are covered with luminophore compounds that radiate when conducting electricity and produce afterglow for 20 minutes in case of power failure. Luminophores of different colors make up an image, a mimetically active visual representation of a so-called Wave-Scotton's imperceivable extra-dimensional paradox that irreversibly destroys general perception processes upon being perceived. Another board with the same image is located behind the outer shell access hatch, placed in such a way so as to obstruct the view of the region within three meters of the shell's geometric center, should the outer shell access hatch be opened while the inner shell is compromised. Shell integrity checkup is to be conducted at least once every two weeks. Inside the containment volume, the following objects are also situated. Two spontaneous decoherence generators. Spec Product 2470A Three Zero Veil Generators Spec Product 2470B A Telepathy Suppression Device Created Using SCP Spec Product 2470C It is essential to maintain a full stock of the aforementioned devices. In case stock supplies diminish, replacement devices are to be manufactured by the Foundation's corresponding facilities upon first request as soon as possible and with the highest priority. The operation procedures are explained in the corresponding manuals attached therein. Work Regulations in the Containment Area All works inside the containment volume are carried out by groups of no fewer than three Grade 4 engineers, who received appropriate training and passed qualifying examination. Any works that have to be performed outside the central shells are to be conducted preferably using robots controlled remotely via a fiber-optic cable. In case human intervention is necessary, personnel must operate wearing full-body suits with fiber-optic communication. 
All types of wireless devices are forbidden to be handled and or used inside the containment volume. Internal examination of the central shells is conducted only by people wearing special dissonance full body suits. Spec Product 2470D. The suit includes a Wavescotton's Paradox, mimetic agent displaying system with 100% external area coverage, a spectrum correcting system built into the HUD. Said system is attuned to the wavelengths the lumophore compound cells radiate in and makes the mimetic agent safe for perception by suppressing specific colors. A spatial image filtration system with high-precision inertial control that blocks the view of the area within 3 meters of the shell's geometrical center. A chronometer with voice countdown for preset periods. Any forms of interaction between the personnel inside and outside the shells are forbidden. Staff members inside the shells communicate between each other using a set of hand signals. The procedure of planned internal examination of the shells is performed along the following steps. 1. Synchronizing chronometers may be done immediately before entering the containment volume. 2. Inertial control system calibration. It is to be done right in front of the external shell's hatch to avoid air accumulation. 3. Activating the image filtration system. Switching on the mimetic agent display. 4. Opening the external shell's hatch, starting 35-minute countdown. Two employees enter the external shell. The third one stays outside and locks the hatch behind them. 5. One of the incomers examines the inner surface of the external shell for any integrity violations. The second examines the outer surface of the inner shell. Regulated procedure time, 15 minutes. 6. After finishing the procedure number 5, the employees, considering the time left, make a decision to enter the inner shell. In case a negative decision is reached, see number 10. In case of a positive decision, number 7. Opening the hatch of the inner shell, starting the 15-minute countdown. One of the employees enters the inner shell. The other remains inside the external shell and locks the hatch from the outside. 8. Examination of the inner surface by the incomer. It is essential to avoid any contact with the area within 3 meters of the geometrical center during the examination. Regulated procedure time, 15 minutes. 9. Regardless of the outcome of procedure number 8, when finishing the 15-minute countdown, the incomer is to be in front of the hatch, being ready to leave. The hatch is to be opened by the employee outside exactly by the time the countdown is finished and only for 20 seconds, and closed and locked afterwards, regardless of circumstances. 10. By the time the 35-minute countdown is finished, both employees are to stay near the external shell's hatch. The hatch is to be opened by the employee outside exactly by the time the countdown finishes and only for 40 seconds, and closed and locked afterwards regardless of circumstances. 11. Leaving the containment volume. Debriefing and progress reports to the operator. In case procedures were not carried out in full, another team is to be prepared for second examination. The second examination is to be conducted completely, regardless of progress of the previous team. Employees failing to leave the shells on time are considered KIA. No rescue missions are to be attempted under any circumstances. In case said employees are found during subsequent examinations, they are to be removed from the shells and remanded to medical staff immediately. Taking off the suit and providing medical care is forbidden for any employees other than medical staff. Emergency Protocols Transmission of information about the outside world into the shells in a form perceivable by the object see description, even if not having observable consequences, is to be classified as a containment breach and aborted as soon as possible. Termination of any employee is permitted if required to enact such. However, it should also be kept in mind that a deviation from the routine containment mode, as long as it remains stable, is preferable to frequent and sudden changes of the object's surroundings. For this reason, Containment restoration is to be conducted through decisive action, guaranteeing solid and sustainable results. In case of pressurization of the main containment volume, all turbomolecular pumps are to be shut off in order to prevent overload. All rotary vane pumps are to operate in overdrive mode to sustain a maximally achievable vacuum during recovery operations. 
If the air pressure inside the containment volume exceeds 1 M-bar, all the operations are to be conducted in sound dampening mode. In case of visible integrity loss in any of the central shells, said shell is considered beyond repair. Instead, a new shell with a diameter 2 meters greater than the current outer shell is to be constructed around the central shells, if the outer shell is intact or two successive shells if both current shells are damaged. After a new shell is put in operation, the old one is to be dismantled, removed, and remelted. The current dimensions of the containment volume allowed to conduct the procedure as many as five times, hence after fourth occurrence of shell integrity loss and subsequent recontainment as described above, site personnel is to initiate work on containment volume expansion. In case of significant damage to both of the shells and thus an inevitable breach of containment volume, Protocol 2470-Alpha is to be engaged. High Command must be notified of the situation immediately through a special hotline. Contained objects of little avail classified as safe or Euclid, preferably extra-dimensional, info- or cognitohazardous, self-replicating upon destruction, or having a particularly complex structure see approved SCP list, are to be brought to the breach zone before any containment restoration procedures take place. This measure is supposed to mitigate the object's destructive influence by forcing it to spend a significant amount of time fully analyzing the complexity and inconsistencies of the aforementioned objects, while their unique properties should not allow SCP-2470 to make any substantial conclusions regarding the properties and laws of baseline reality. Any risks related to object interactions are considered justified. Permanent deployment of some of the objects from the approved SCP list inside the facilities of Area 141 is currently under review. In case of a BI, Before Invasion Class, or TCF Total Containment Failure Class scenarios, if any local factors directly compromise the safety of Area 141 or by the order of the O5 Council, Protocol 2470-Beta must be engaged in order to neutralize SCP-2470. Four executors, two main, two backup, are to be selected from the approved list and delivered to Area 141. The subjects must receive instruction and conduct test procedures on D-Class personnel. The main and backup pairs afterwards stand on duty with a five-minute notice to start the procedure, until Protocol 2470-Beta is cancelled by a direct order from O5 Council. At the order of High Command, or in case of sudden aggravation of the situation and loss of communication with the headquarters, the neutralization procedure is to be enacted under Area Command responsibility. After it is confirmed to be successful, the executors, both pairs, and all the D-Class personnel located in Area 141 are to be terminated. Any documentation relevant to SCP-2470 is to be destroyed, and Area 141 is to be evacuated and destroyed via thermal nuclear charge. Neutralization of the object, regardless of all the complexities of its containment, is the very last resort and is to be avoided until absolutely necessary. For this reason, subjects from the potential executors list are not to be present in Area 141 unless Protocol 2470-Beta is engaged. Organizational Aspects Due to the containment procedure complexity, an unacceptable potential cost of error, a training complex has been established in Area 141 grounds for the purpose of general simulation of the containment volume and the containment area. All personnel involved with containment are to regularly practice under supervision of an authorized employee with Level 3 clearance and take qualification tests at least monthly. Any non-routine works and procedures can only be carried out after training course simulations and rehearsals show a 100% success rate. Exceptions to this rule are permissible only on private order of area director in situations of extreme time pressure. Medical staff are to conduct physical examination of the working group prior to entering the containment volume and examine all Area 141 personnel monthly. Prior to deployment in Area 141, each member of the medical staff is to read, understand, and sign the classified document 2470-X attached with a Level 4 clearance employee as witness. Significant psychological tension caused by a large amount of important and demanding procedures associated with every entry into containment volume, such as wearing and checking a full body suit, passing through the four airlocks, 
calibrating numerous systems, working inside the shells under severe time pressure and others, necessitates extra attention to personnel's mental health. Engineers assigned to the containment volume are to be given additional vacations. Any and all research of SCP-2470 is currently forbidden. Access to the archive of previously gained retrieved information for purposes of analysis is allowed for employees with Level 3 clearance or above by direct approval of at least two O5 members. As it is suspected that some members of the sex presumably responsible for the object's appearance or connected to it may still be alive and at large, Area 141 is considered to be under aggressive threat. Although there is no reason to believe the aforementioned cultists to have any significant forces at their disposal, they possess information about the object that may potentially help them attract the interest of, and gain support from, other potentially dangerous radical organizations. Because of that, MTF and, apart from their main duties, are charged with monitoring the activity of any pro-apocalyptic groups and to actively instigate cultists to contact them by creating front radical organization and sex. Description SCP-2470 is a specific existential entity, or perceptive element, which is objectively an initial manifestation of a ZK-class scenario. Due to insuperable obstacles related to its perception, the object's appearance, if it has any, remains unknown. Its current locus is determined indirectly, based on the area of effect it produces. Said effect is manifested through the instantaneous disappearance of any object or event perceived by SCP-2470 from objective reality. First and foremost, this applies to the most proximate aspects, which are directly accessible to the object's senses. Thereafter, as the object accumulates knowledge, gains abstract understanding of the nature of things, and makes generalizations, the effect extends to the phenomena themselves their direct and later indirect consequences. For instance, during the initial recovery operation, it was noted that the sound of the agent's footsteps, said agents were obstructed from sight by smokescreens, was starting to drown out due to sonic oscillations having stopped. Soon afterwards, large volumes of the air itself started to spontaneously disappear, which caused hyperbaric effects. This was followed by the disappearance of several agents' legs and finally the agents disappeared wholly and completely. In a similar fashion, at first several clots of the aforementioned smokescreen disappeared, but the effect soon spread to whole smoke clouds, followed by all active smoke grenades at the operation site. This culminated with disappearance of all smoke grenades of that specific type at the operation site, regardless of their being within range of the object's perception. Disappearance of soil caused a crater up to 200 meters deep to manifest at the location of the object's discovery. Apparently, the object was somehow confused that every demanifested volume of soil brought more into view, and that slowed the process down. It did not manage to realize the Earth as a limited and finite entity. Due to constant disappearances of air, atmospheric pressure has dropped at the operation site, and a steady high-current cyclone is formed. Since any generalizations of reasons behind any phenomena inevitably led to using abstract concepts and eventually led to logically reasoning the universe's existence per se, SCP-2470 is classified as a potential ZK-class hazard. According to the analysis of gathered data, it was reliably established that the object possesses the following senses. A perception of electromagnetic radiation in an extremely wide frequency range, including the visible spectrum which is analogous to vision, a highly sensitive perception of a mechanical stimuli, which is analogous to tactile sense and hearing, a perception of The following senses are reasonably likely to be possessed by the object. A direct yet severely limited telepathic perception, a perception of certain quantum effects, particularly quantum superposition of states as a singular phenomenon. The later hypothesis is related to the events that happened during as well as damage and demanifestation of at least equipment sensors and human sensory organs during attempts to perceive the object directly, which is apparently related to the wave function collapse that inevitably accompanies an act of perception and is seemingly perceivable by SCP-2470. Moreover, this hypothesis combined with the conclusion regarding provides an explanation to how the object manages to avoid exposure to Wavescotton's paradox. 
Apparently, the effect of quantum entanglement of the object in present time with itself, in an immediate future, allows it to perceive the damaging effect of the mimetic agent, without even having a concept of its nature, and, based on that information, allows SCP-2470 to refuse to perceive it, to close its eyes, metamorphically speaking. However, the fact that this modus operandi remains its only manner of existence for years in containment counts in favor of the paradox's adequacy and the proficiency of the developed neutralization procedure, which is based on a forceful inoculation of a destructive meme bypassing the object's senses. Information removed from public access. Deletion pending. Level 4 clearance is required to continue. According to another hypothesis, the idea of SCP-2470 being a cognizing entity is not quite correct, as a ZK-class scenario can leave behind neither any knowledge of the current existence nor any entities possessing such knowledge. Actually, the origin of the effect resulting in a ZK-class scenario lies not within the object, as we got used to thinking, but within the whole outer world. It is not the object that tears fragments away from reality, but the reality itself discharging these fragments and casting them into the most fitting place, into the unfillable unbeing that is SCP-2470, as soon as they form a strong enough causal connection with it. Unbeing as the true nature of the object originates as a result of every successful attempt to perceive it, thus its unbeing as a priori singular, Part of the object manifests on the information medium or inside the perceiver's mind, destroying it directly. Under this hypothesis, this explains the above-referenced effects on perception. From this perspective, the cognizing nature of the object appears to be merely an illusion, caused by its dualistic position relative to the forgetting nature of the universe through a virtual cognition related to the object, created by this impact, appears to be indistinguishable from a real one. Moreover, the concepts of real and objective appear to be conventional and hardly applicable in the given context. This is what determines the object's inability to perceive Weepscotton's paradox, but in this case it appears to be an objective and natural limitation, not related to a willed refusal to perceive. From this point of view, the effectiveness of the developed neutralization procedure seems very dubious. Recovery Log the first report of the object's anomalous activity came on 20 at about from an airplane observer of FGU Avela Sukrana, who was conducting fire safety monitoring in the area. The pilot reported a huge deforested area centered around a wide, deep cavity. Communication with the pilot ceased soon afterwards. Their report was intercepted by undercover Foundation agents in the MES and a reconnaissance operation with Mobile Task Forces was arranged. Initial hypotheses regarding the object's nature were defining it as something akin to a miniature black hole. However, primary analysis disproved this point of view, and demonstrated the true nature of the anomaly. Several methods of containment and or neutralization, such as have been applied unsuccessfully, and were followed by a proposal to use Wavescotton's paradox in order to neutralize the object. This attempt was a partial success. Neutralization was not achieved. However, it was discovered that the paradox's carrier was not susceptible to the object's effect, which allowed the Foundation to capture SCP-2470 after several unsuccessful attempts and to develop the current containment protocols. Total losses throughout the whole operation amount to employees. Excerpt from Dr. Report There was a remarkable episode during one of the first attempts of neutralization when, at the suggestion of Agent, a mirror was placed within the object's field of view. It seemed logical that, after seeing its own reflection, the object would neutralize itself. However, Though the other things reflected in the mirror were subjected to its effects to the full, the object itself did not undergo any changes. Instead, it destroyed the mirror, although this action took it twelve seconds more than it usually took for items of similar scale. Also, it is obvious that the object has not been self-destructing due to self-awareness for years already. This can be rationalized by one of the following hypotheses. The object is either able to apply its effects selectively, or is passively non-susceptible to them. The object is either unable to perceive itself, or is avoiding that. The object itself is unrecognizable. 
The cognizable nature of the object is actually the object itself. Any sort of cognition results in the object's duplication, which equals to the object growing due to its indivisible nature. The last hypothesis for more precise control. According to the data gathered later on, a small village of which had been abandoned since at least the late 80s, had been situated at the initial discovery site. However, a few years before the anomaly appeared, it had been occupied with members of an unidentified, radical, pro-apocalyptic religious community. The evidence of their activity is sketchy and inconsistent, though it suggests that Addendum 1 The transcript of O5 Message to the Personnel Area 141 Dear Colleagues, after the command of Area 141 informed me of certain popular perceptions among your community, I saw it right to explain certain particularities regarding our policy on SCP-2470. Yes, this object is exactly as dangerous as you were told or probably even more. Thus far, our only salvation was the fact that the embryonic state of its mind cannot comprehend many of the things we consider obvious that air is not nothingness, and exists not just when it feels a breeze, that Earth is a celestial body of a finite size, that the sun is not a flat shining spot on the horizon, that people, despite how different they are, all represent humankind as a whole, and so on. Yes, it is essential to keep the object in complete isolation and to avert any transmission of the most insignificant information at any cost. It learns very fast and we can never be sure which grain of knowledge it lacks to be given a nudge to the ideas of space, time, infinity, and universe. Yes, it is both difficult and dangerous to contain such an object, and yes, we do possess a procedure of its neutralization. Why are we not engaging it? The reason is because the containment itself is of a huge strategic value to us. The thing is, according to research on this subject, simultaneous occurrence of two ZK-class scenarios is fundamentally impossible. Therefore, as long as one of them is being contained, we guarantee that the others, which might not be so easily controlled anyhow, will not happen. In fact, we were very lucky that this object took a form that can be contained at acceptable cost, so it would not be sensible to lose such opportunity. Therefore. Containment will be carried out as long as we can manage, with neutralization being planned only for such an extreme case when the object's direct threat will be big enough to negate all of our prospects of carrying this policy out in the future, along with the future itself. Through thick and thin, you have to know that your work guarantees humanity's continued existence. Treat it properly. Secure. Contain. Protect. Sincerely yours, O5. Addendum 2 the list of enactors and the methodology for procedure of the object's neutralization. The procedure is to be performed by two subjects possessing confirmed telepathic abilities rated at no less than nine points on the scale, with the satisfactory result for 2470 QT Spatial Awareness Test. No history or earlier exposure, and no impairments, such as color blindness, that affect visual and color perception. In case the list is down to 30 positions or less for, for whatever reason, use of SCP for development of telepathic abilities and suitable candidates is authorized for the purpose of replenishing the list. As of today, individuals are on the list, namely, immediately after Protocol 2470 Beta is engaged, there is a preliminary measure that consists of building an additional shell according to the requirements for inner shell breach scenarios. The executors must be kept in ignorance of the true purpose of the area, a cover story of it being a telepathy research center and the process being a test of their abilities is to be adhered to. Additionally, the subjects must not know about each other's existence. Violation of this condition is grounds for immediate termination and a selection of new candidates. The neutralization procedure is performed using an adaptive version of Wapescotton's paradox, divided into two subcomponents both safe to be proceed separately. The subject's task is to memorize one of the subcomponents and to implant it synchronously into the mind of the entity, which is located in the center of the shell, demonstrated to them using live transmission. 
the active 2470C telepathy suppression device is to be switched off five seconds before the subjects are authorized to act, and should be kept offline for at least 15, but no more than 25 seconds. Trial runs for this procedure are conducted at the on-site training complex using a Class D test subject. At least three successful trial runs in succession are required before the performers are cleared for work. When taking part in the actual procedure, the subjects must not know it is not a trial run. After the procedure is performed, the first inspection is conducted by switching off the inner shell power for 30 minutes. In case the inner shell shows no change in its electrical performance and has no other signs of structural damage, the inspection is considered passed. The second inspection is conducted visually, by means of employees entering the central shell wearing protective suits with the spatial image filtration system turned off. If the procedure is successful, the shell should not have anything inside. Addendum 3, Document 2470-X, Medical Staff Only This document is intended for the medical staff of Area 141 only. Divulgence of any details contained herein is the result in termination. Any other employee displaying knowledge of the contents of this document is to be, aside from appropriate disciplinary action, treated with a Class A amnestic and transferred to another Foundation facility. The medical staff of Area 141 are to pay extra attention to psychological health assessment of employees during periodical personnel surveys. Aside from disorders that are natural for conditions of strenuous work, special effort must be put into discovering the following complex of symptoms. Repetitive dreams featuring an abstract pulsing and glowing black mass, identified as SCP-2470 by the examinee. Total lack of any dreams soon thereafter in less than a week, flattening of effects, progressive indifference to surroundings, and reactions becoming mechanical, repeating episodes in which the examinee looks at a common everyday object for a long time with an uncommon curiosity. A lack of any discernible dreams lasting for two weeks is considered a sufficient warrant for a suspension and quarantine assessment. The quarantine implicates a termination of any forms of communication with any personnel not involved in the process of assessment. To ensure reliable diagnosis, a trust relationship with the personnel is to be set and maintained. It is recommended to present the practice of regular discussions of dreams as a preliminary phase of psychological survey, aimed at distraction from the current situation and relaxation. The keen interest in nightmares can be explained as a search for hidden reasons for nervousness and analysis of suppressed fears. The aforementioned diagnosis should be given top priority for personnel involved in procedures taking place inside the containment volume in central shells, and especially for those who spent unscheduled time inside, for whatever reasons. The latter are to be quarantined immediately and thoroughly examined for no less than two weeks. Everyone who spent more than an hour and a half inside the outer shell, or more than an hour inside the inner shell, are to be considered to fail the inspection, regardless of observed state. All diagnosed cases are to be processed as soon as possible. Employees with diagnosed symptoms are to be put in an artificial coma under pretense of an insignificant surgical intervention, given two complete cycles of D-class amnestic treatment, and subsequently euthanized by a neurotoxin injection and cremated. The rest of personnel are to be given a cover story implicating that the employee is dismissed for medical reasons and transferred to another Foundation facility. You will receive the instructions on covering the above-reference activity from your ISD case officers.